Karen, have you ever heard of the term spiritual cord cutting? I have not. Oh, then this is going to be fun because I did a little bit of research on it and it is absolutely fascinating and it makes so much sense. It explains everything to me. So we've heard a lot about healings. Mm -hmm. We've talked to Reiki practitioners. We've talked to intuitive energy healers. We've talked to people who draw down entities to heal people. But the big question all along has been, man, why do people have this need to be healed all the time? You're asking me for the answer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. Kinda. No? Well, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you no. <laughs> uh, oh, that's how it is. Okay, I understand. All right, well, our next guest actually could potentially give us an answer. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The, the Skeptic, Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. I had to change it up a little bit, Karen. I can't say the same thing every time. <laughs> hello, everybody. He hello. <laughs> it's usually, it's like, hey, everyone. No, this one is hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. I'm super excited that you're here with us today. Without further ado, I want to welcome to the show Maria Molina. She is a psychic medium, a Reiki master teacher, a spiritual teacher, and a shamanic healer. Now. Her work includes blessed and Reiki-infused wire-wrapped crystal jewelry, intentional candles, spiritual baths, and a whole bunch of other hygiene products that she makes with love in the interest of healing people. Maria, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me here. So the question on the table, Maria, to see if you can answer it is, why the sudden need for so many healings out there? I think we're just entering into this um, new state in life where it's... Uh... The way we've been doing things, it's really not working anymore. And we're having a lot of, you know, I would say high vibrational souls coming in, being born, turning into adults. And, you know, we come from, it's just the vibration feels a lot higher. And so we're seeing where, you know, healing is needed, whether it's the earth, whether it's, you know, people. Um, and it's not that, you know, we're the ones healing them, we're allowing them to really tap into their own healing energy. Mm -hmm. So it's just the way the world is going and, and what's happening today, it's, it's, it's called, it's, it's, we're being called to step it up to the next level. Yeah. Because, well, um, yeah, things are shifting. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I think we need it so much. And I guess to answer your earlier question, Will, I think that especially now there's so much just toxic energy I mean, you can wake up in a great mood and you're out in traffic for two minutes and then, you know, someone cuts you off or, you know, whatever. And next thing you know, you're so angry and you're vibing with the rest of this anger that's out there right now. And I think it's just, good Lord, we need help. <laughs> it's, it's very toxic. Yeah. But there is a lot of anger, there seems to be, in the world these days for lots, lots of re different reasons. And I'm sure a lot of it is merited and warranted, but some of it maybe has to do with something called spiritual cords right maria i was thinking that too yes we're connected to everything we're connected to um you know the source but we're also connected to each other and so when people have fears anxiety um anger all these things you know we are feeling it not knowing that you know we're tapped into all of it you know and then there's the mirrors and and things that you know the just you know they social media and all these things where it's different free vibrational frequencies. It's like we're high, we're low, we're this, we're that. So, you know, we have to find our ground. So I want to get back to the cord for a second, because the way I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but every time you meet somebody new, you make a connection, an energetic connection with that person. And if you spend some time with them, that energetic connection grows stronger and it, it's like a cord, an energetic cord that goes between you and the person you just met. It could be a coworker. It could be a lover. It could be a family, friends, anybody. But then sometimes as things happen, 
sometimes you go separate ways and sometimes those cords are not severed. And over a certain period of time, more and more cords are connected to you, which sometimes could explain feelings of tiredness all the time, crankiness, anger, just general maybe all these different things that people say the world is under a tremendous amount of strain under because of could we're talking about the, the state of the world it's in right now, but could, could it be that we're just, we need to kind of clear our energies and cut our cords that are no longer viable to us. And that's like the entire world is so have 50,000 cords coming out of them that, that they're just draining everyone's energy. If, you know, if there's many different ways to look at it, you know, um, someone who perhaps knows about this and knows how to clear, you know, knows how to ground their energy, most likely they won't be as effective as someone who just has no clue of how they share their energy with people and what's the boundary. You know, they're not, they're not setting boundaries to themselves and their own energy. So what has to be, for instance, a lover, you know, you're intimate with your lover, you're connected, you're with them all the time, and then you break up. And you're feeling all these different emotions. You might even be feeling their emotions and they're feeling yours. And it's just this back and forth thing. So, um, and if you think about past lovers on and on and on, you know, friendship, parents. So, um, it does take a toll, um, and especially takes a toll when the other person maybe is more needy, um, is more like energy vampire, that kind of thing. That's when you start to kind of feel off. Um, and so this is why it's important where you know your own energy. You know how you feel like. You know what it's like to be Will. And when you start Most to times. feel like Will, you know that maybe there might be some clearing that needs to be done. Right. So Maria, I'm a Gemini, right? So someday I'll wake up feeling like Will. And the next day I'll feel like not Will. And then the next day after that, I'll feel like kind of somewhere in between. And sometimes I'm just someone completely different. So yeah. how can someone like me, who's maybe not as in tune with their own energy, how can I tell whether or not I need a clearing? You just got to check in with self, like on a daily. So for instance, like waking up in the morning, seeing how you're feeling like, you know, what does your body feel like? Um, did your head hurt? Um, what are your emotions like? You know, so it's just like a, a, a check-in with yourself. Um, because sometimes maybe you are being affected as an empath, perhaps, by the world around you or people or the situation. Um, grounding is important for that as well. You know, a tree knows it's a tree. It knows where it is. You know, regardless of the weather, the rain, the seasons, like it knows, like it's right there. That's where it belongs. And so that's, that's kind of the same with us. You know, we, 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 you know that you shift sometimes with your emotions. Maybe perhaps, maybe you know yourself better than you do. But if there's a difference between like not feeling like yourself, like if then maybe you kind of being emotionally up and down, you know, it's, it's a slight difference. Um, feeling drained, feeling spiritually tired. That's feeling spiritually, spiritually tired is a different feeling than just feeling tired. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's almost like, um, you can barely move, you know, that kind of feeling. So we make all these connections and create these cords unwittingly and say it's like a past an ex lover and it's years. Like, can that connection kind of fizzle and then rehappen? I'm asking this for a very specific so, reason. I think you know well, uh, I, what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm not liking it. <laughs> no, I, I don't mean, I mean, just like, you know, you, you forget and like this person doesn't affect you and then you move on and then all of a sudden it comes back and you're like. Ugh. And now you're affected. Yep. Yeah. 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 I know exactly what you're uh, talking some, Someone, whether it's you or that other person, is bringing the, the attention back to you or the situation. It's kind of like, you know, you think of someone and then they call you two days later. You know, mm -hmm. like someone is, you know, reawakening that connection again. Right. And I know that there are specific types of people who followed certain paths who actually undergo a ritual of sorts. Like in, for your, I mean, we, we got to call it out the way it is, Karen, because there's no way I can sure. explain this without saying. <laughs> so an ex of hers is rematerialized out of the blue and it's causing some thought processes to happen, right? Because he's, he has some issues and he's getting over them and he's trying to make amends. And then the question is, do we want to bring that back into our lives or do we not want to, right? So sometimes when you undergo a, a breakup or an ending of a relationship of some sort, some people make a big ritual out of the actual severing of that connection because 
that then helps you visualize the actual cord cutting spiritually between the two people. So I don't know, Karen, if you actually had a physical ritual of some sort or some sort of cord cutting ceremony to remove yourselves, your connection, because if you have it, that could be that that connection is being reestablished and all the annoyances from the back in the past are coming right back in. Yeah. Well, I don't like the thought of having a connection <laughs> or a cord to this. Word. I went to Portugal the next day. Does that, is that a ritual? <laughs> no, no, I don't think it does. It was very severing to me. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but you do have, knowing you, and I, my apologies, Maria, for bringing you into this conversation, but knowing you the way I know you, you tend to just shut it away. Yep. You <laughs> shut it away and you don't look at it again. So those connections, those cords are still attached. That, that shutting away isn't enough to sever it? No, no, it's not. Well, no, I'm asking her. She's oh, the sorry. Yes, Maria, <laughs> how does someone cut their cords? Well, I mean, if you ignore it, it's kind of just like putting tape on a open pipe that's, you know, leaking. Um, but what I do, I don't cut it. I remove it, right? Ooh, I re- that's even so better. I visualize, because the last time when I feel cords, it's like more in my torso, middle section, more so by like my solar plexus is where I feel it. Um, and when I remove cords from people, I feel it more like on the the right side of their stomach area. So, so what I do is I picture like tree roots like inside of me. And so I slowly, and, and with the help of, of Archangel Michael or whoever, you know, it can just be your old self. You don't need, you know, if, if you feel good doing it yourself. So I slowly, slowly, not too fast, start moving those, those roots. And these roots can be going from different directions, different energies. And, and I fully remove it. And I have this vision that is good, it's, it's being transmuted into something better. So energy is energy. It doesn't really die. So it gets transmuted. And then I invite light to fill that space where the roots work. If I cut it, I feel like it just regrows. And sometimes even when you remove the root, you can still start forming attachments with thoughts, with feelings, all these things, right? But just be mindful of it. So that's what I do. I remove it at the root. And then I feel it with light. Whoa. Are there any cords that you shouldn't cut? Because my first thought when Will mentioned the cord cutting, I was thinking umbilical cord and like a connection to the mother or the earth or the energy source. But now I'm thinking more of like cable. <laughs> and there are connections to cable. You know, so are there any it's, cords that you should keep? It's, um, yeah, I mean, if, if, you don't wanna, if you don't feel drained by a specific person's energy, then, you know, perhaps maybe it's not really taking from your life force. Um, the way I see it, so removing cords doesn't mean that you are never going to talk to that person or you don't like that person. It just means that you want to be in your own energy source. So, okay. you know, we're all connected to source. But what happens is sometimes when, we, when we're corded to something maybe more toxic or maybe something more draining, it's almost like we're receiving life force energy, but it, it can easily be seeped out by these cords that we give. That's why like some people feel great when they're around us. And then when they leave, we're like kind of tired, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of feeling. So we want our own energy source. Could we be inadvertently sucking someone else's energy? I you think know, we've like, all probably or, been toxic at one point or maybe needy or, you know, maybe we are going to a time in our lives where we need support and we're not really in a good place. So we mm-hmm. seek someone who makes us feel better, you okay. know, and maybe when sense. we leave, they're not so energetic after, you know, they're exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That's why I think it's important, like to ask people, Hey, can you hold space for me today? I'm not feeling cool. You know, is that what that means? Yeah, can you hold space for me? You know, like asking them if it's okay instead of just we don't know what they're doing instead <laughs> of just dumping on them without them knowing. Right, yeah, right. sucking their energies out of their bodies. So, how about people who want to make those connections but are having a hard time doing so? Is there a way to strengthen that connection? Strengthen, like um, being courted with them. Like, uh-huh. or, I think um, if it if the connection is really strong and it makes both parties feel good like the way you strengthen it is just to kind of spend time and 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 energy together um, and sometimes you know like a twin flame situation mm-hmm. right it's like both are in the same kind of energetic field it's almost like they're two one it's like oneness there so i can see something like that you know benefiting both but as long as you guys can also be r- remain in a good state separate 
and that's not affecting you, then it shouldn't be a problem. But if it's a problem that you can't even separate from your person, I would maybe work on getting my power back a bit more. Well, you know a lot about a lot about healing. You're a Reiki master teacher. You do wrapped jewelry. You are a shamanic healer. And I want to dive into some of that a little bit. But what made you decide, I've got to heal people? Well, I don't feel like I heal people. I feel like I'm a tool to help them heal themselves. Like it's, you know, but, right. and, but as far as like wanting to help other people, I was sitting at, you know, I, I, I worked in New York City for 16 years. Uh, I was sitting at a desk and, you know, wondering about all these terrible things going on in this world. And I wanted to be useful and I didn't feel useful. It made me feel very anxious and depressed. And so I, Reiki started to come up a lot in my life. And I decided to get a Reiki session. I got five Reiki sessions and it changed my life. And I said, I need to do this for other people or at least be there in that kind of way. And so I quit my nice and five thinking I'm going to have a big Reiki business. It didn't turn out that way, but I started from the ground up. Right. And uh, I, I haven't stopped since. This was in our 2015 when I left corporate. How specifically did it change your life? Like, what was different after those five sessions? It was like a, a light was turned on in me. It was, uh, I was able to see clearly um, my purpose where I didn't really know what my purpose was before. Mm. Like, I was okay. just living mm-hmm. the same one day in life. Yeah, I, I can kind of relate because... Everyone who has listened to the show knows my story and how I've been constantly looking, searching for that physical, tangible proof that some of this stuff is real. I'm not good at taking things by faith. And Reiki was actually the thing that proved to me that there's something there. Because to me, feeling it, I wasn't still 100% sure. But once I got attuned and the energy was flowing through me and the feelings that came from that, it was a a change. It, it was a light bulb for me. It was. A, it did change my life because suddenly I realized, oh, th- this is legit. This is not baloney. This stuff is real out there. So then made me want to look further into mm-hmm. what else is there if Reiki is there. So I can imagine Reiki it's kind were, of cool. Reiki was the catalyst mm-hmm. to everything else. Yes. And then now I have a podcast mm-hmm. about it. <laughs> yeah. so and it, now it's like a medium. It's just like, it's just, it's like the gateway modality. Right? <laughs> So I'm glad you brought up the psychic medium thing. We just, we had someone on the show of a little while ago that his foundation certifies mediums. And I'd never really heard of that before until I had talked to him. And it's such a freaking fantastic idea because then you know who's real. So in researching you before you came onto the interview, I realized on your website, you say that you are a certified medium. So I'm fascinated. Can you tell us how, who certified you and what was the process like? Okay, so um, Lillian Juarez, um, she certified me, and she she learned from Lisa Williams. She um, just I forgot who she, who Lisa Williams learned from, but so what it is basically is the hours that you put in, like you know, um, learning the foundation, but also how many hours are you practicing reading other people and coming back and and having the people that you've read speak to Lily and, and say, hey, you know, she got this correct or this and that. And so it's kind of like this back and forth validation. Um, and we don't always get validation in the real world. When, when I'm reading someone, they're not going to tell me if I'm right or wrong. But when learning this, um, it's about the practice and how many hours I'm putting in the practicing. Um, so for a whole year, I, I did practices and I did group sessions and, you know, every day I was like doing something, whether it's with meditation or spiritual hygiene to kind of get a clearer connection to the spirit world or intuitive because they're both different. So how do you use that in healing? So, and sometimes, so I am also like, I'm, I'm also a medical medium, so, but I don't have to be a medical medium to help people, but sometimes I just kind of feel out maybe depression or some mental things that are going on. Um, sometimes, um, health things as well, um, something what to look at. And also when I do Reiki, I get a lot of information coming in too about what I'm feeling about the person. So, and Reiki is separate from psychic or medium, Mm -hmm. but it just comes in and I just kind of give it if I need to. Right. Um, 
Psychic is a healing. I feel it. Psychic medium is also a healing modality. Is that something you learned or something that you've, a gift you've always had? How, how did you realize that you could also be a medium or that you were apparently, also? Apparently, apparently I've always had it, but I didn't know. You know, I, I, I only thought if you were to see like a spirit, like a ghost or something, like it would be right there, like in the movie. But what yeah. I didn't realize is that when someone, I would, I was getting a reading and she says, you're going to be doing mediumship. And I said, no way. I get readings. I don't do reading. So she, <laughs> she, he made me give her a reading. I, I was like, but I'm paying you to read me. She's like, you're going to give me a reading. And so I started to tell her what I was seeing in my imagination. And she was, she, I, I brought her to tears when she started to cry. I knew that. Okay, maybe I do have something. You should cry so, about the information. So then the question is, did she then pay you for the reading? <laughs> right. <laughs> she was a wash. <laughs> we get each other. I, I still had to pay for the session. Wow, yeah. see, that's wrong. No. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she wanted to make you pay twice because you made her cry for crying. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all kinds of different types of healing modalities and all that kind of stuff. Something we've not touched on yet is the, the jewelry that you do, the wrap jewelry. Can you explain to us the symbolism or the reasons why wrap jewelry is good for this type of thing? Well, because you can you can carry it on, right? You can put it around your neck. You can wear it as a ring, bracelet. You know, um, I mean, if you want to carry a stones in your pocket or in your bra, that's fine. You know, um, but some people like to wear it. You know, and it looks like pretty, it's shiny, and it's unique, but you can also have it with you, you know, and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's, it's way uncomfortable when I wear it in my bra, so I try not to do that. So. <laughs> You're getting chafed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to get chafed. <laughs> so what, what do you wrap it with? How, how, like, explain to us what it looks like. Cause I'm not sure that we've ever seen that. It's, um, it's, I wrap it with copper and copper is also really good, um, for you. Um, but I, um, I wrap it with copper, different styles of wrap. And, um, I've used gold before I've used silver, but for some reason I just really enjoy copper because it's really easy to work with. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it depends, you know, sometimes I don't know how it's going to be wrapped. I always say that the crystal showed me how it wants to be wrapped because sometimes sure. I'll try to wrap a crystal and it's not working like nothing. I can try it 10 times and it's like, okay, this crystal here wants to be free. Does it want to be wrapped? So I would use another one and then it would low effort lifting. So it just kind of showed me how it wants to be wrapped. I know people use crystals sometimes to heal people. Mm -hmm. Do you use them for that purpose or is that not really the reason for the wrap jewelry? Um, Yeah, sometimes I definitely use um, crystals to work with healing. So um, crystals are very intelligent. You know, Um, they've been around longer than most things here, right? So... um, and the thing about crystals is that they can be cleared, they can be charged. So, for instance, let's say um, someone has a headache, you know, and if you want to maybe, let's say, work with a clear quartz, the master stone, which is what they call it, a master stone, you can work with maybe, um, it can absorb some, you know, some of the things happening within the center here, um, energetically, um, and sometimes even physically, those, those physical pain. Um, you know, right now I've been working a lot with fluorite. Fluorite is, is the healing stone. And I was having trouble sleeping, let's say. Um, started sleeping with it under my pillow. My dreams have been so vivid. I'm able to sleep like a baby. And this is like, after, like I, 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 I wasn't working with crystals. Like, I was working with crystals, but I kind of, like, put that aside and started doing other things. But when I got back to, like, really paying attention, it's like night and day. I sleep like a baby. And it's like every night I'm sleeping with fluorite under my pillow. So it's very subtle. But it works. Note to self, Karen. Fluorite. Yeah, right. Not fluoride. Right. Fluorite. It's like Blue a ring under there. <laughs> oh, I totally was going to sleep with my two toothpicks on my pillow. A little crest <laughs> under the pillow. Not working. Yeah, I like, I prefer, before you smell good. I like Colgate, actually. <laughs> you gave us a really good example of how you clear these cords that are sometimes connecting us that maybe we don't, we no longer need. And... It'd be wonderful if someone was able to go to you to have you help them clear or, or remove these cords. But if someone wasn't able to physically come to you, how would you recommend they go about getting that connection out of them? I do a lot of my work 
um, believe it or not, um, virtual, remote, rem yeah, virtual, right? So whether it's on this, so I do um, distance um, healing with Reiki, um, and I do remove cords um, when I'm doing the Reiki as well. Um, I also tell them if if they're not doing a service and they just kind of need guidance, there's a lot of great um, videos on YouTube that I've looked up, like a meditation of how to remove the cords. But for me, my best advice is they're very visual to visualize it actually taking place and happening. The sure. visualization is so important. So Will has done Reiki on me several times and there have been times where I have felt it so much like I'm not looking at him and, and I've told him, you know, don't don't press down on my leg or whatever. And I look and he's not even touching me because mm -hmm. it's just that kind of focused and pointed energy. When you're doing it virtually, would you would someone have that same experience or is it more like how does it how does it work virtually? Everyone is really different because even in person, some people aren't really sensitive to the energy, like they barely feel it. And then some are very sensitive. So I feel like it depends on the sensitivity of someone, but it definitely, um, they're, it's still working. Like the Reiki is so reaching them. Um, um, and some people feel it more than others, but it's, um, I, I mean, I prefer like in person or because like I prefer everything in person. I even like when I call like, something i like to speak to a live person like i'm just that person but yeah it still works it's still beneficial either way yeah and, and i'm sure it is and i wasn't you know i hope oh no i, I, I didn't oh. mean to seem like it was i just didn't know because like when his hand is like shooting at it i mean i don't i don't know how he works but in my mind it's like <laughs> shooting out of his hand on the spot but like in a computer it's like angle it towards you like how do you know i mean that, that, oh, that was, what, I was oh, what i do what i do is I, I i call upon their energy to so um, I call upon their energy and some people can bring it, the you know, person's energy to the to teddy bear. Sometimes like they can do the Reiki on the teddy bear because the intention is to, um, to connect with that to their energy. So you're able to kind of with Reiki and with permission, you know, to bring them here with you, even though they're over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, um, yeah, I, can, my, I can visualize that. I can, my, <laughs> I can get my, it my, my Reiki master, the one that um, I learned from, he said that he he would hold his teddy bear like like the the neck of the teddy bear was like this. So then the guy that he was doing it on the next week said, oh, I have this ache in my neck and I don't know where it's coming from. And he said, oh, I I had you like I had the teddy bear kind of lopsided. So he realized that he needs to have a teddy bear flat so that because that's really him in the teddy bear, the, the, the spirit, the, you know. It, it's interesting. It, yeah. So now, oh, yeah. now we're talking about voodoo dolls. I was just going to say, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so with me, I don't really bring their energy into a bear or a pillow. I have them here. So sometimes this is where their head would be, their chest, their, their feet. And so like, I can just feel different areas. If I'm feeling this area here, it's like stomach, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just me feeling habiti in my hands. Habiti is that tingle that you feel when you are working on them, that, that thing, you, you know what I'm talking about, Will. I, I do. Sometimes I get tingles. Sometimes I get heat. Sometimes heat. Um, it's, it's, you know, different sensations and some people feel it differently from when I do it. Yeah. I know uh, Karen feels it very much like pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, other people I've worked on feel it like heat. Some people have felt it cold. Actually. Cold. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes yeah. when I feel pain in my hair, like it actually hurts, I feel like it's more something physical happening within their body. When I feel that have like tingle, they kind of feel more like it might be more like a spiritual level. I mean, it depends, you know, it's different for every, every, mm -hmm. every client is going to be different. You mentioned earlier that sometimes you get messages while you're giving Reiki. That's never happened to me because I'm not really an intuitive. I'm not psychic. I'm not a medium, not anything like that. Uh, well, Karen, uh, I beg to differ. contrary to public <laughs> belief, but what I do, what has, what has happened with me is that as I'm laying hands on someone, sometimes I will say like, it'll just, the energy will draw me to a certain place in their body that they didn't mention was where they needed the help. So it's almost like, like intuitively, I know where I need to place my hands for the best possible outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and my Reiki master teacher told me that Reiki energy is, is almost sentient. So it, it'll go exactly where it's needed the most. So um, that may be, okay, now to your point here, Karen, maybe that's my intuitive sense is going, I need to go here. And I mean, not to Reiki. So 
just forget everything I just said for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to know, especially like during the COVID and the pandemic, what has there been more of a need for? Reiki or mediumship? Like what have people been seeking you out for most? Well, when the pandemic started, that's when I was done. I thought, that's it. There goes my business, you know? Um, but people were calling in a lot for intuitive, um, intuitive messages. I, 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 people booked a lot of readings after mm -hmm. the pandemic. They just need get some guidance of like what to do and their emotions and feelings. And I, I, Reiki, I got some Reiki business as well. Um, but more so with the readings. That's interesting. And okay, I, I so, did a lot of soul, soul retrieval as well, shamanic soul retrieval. And that's but, where my next question was going to go. It's going to go to the shamanic tradition because you are, I don't want to say aware of it, but you're comfortable with that. You you consider yourself a shamanic healer. So talking back to cord cutting, sometimes you can use, and I know that right now it's not very popular because of their, their claims of appropriation and things like that, but like sage and things like that. Mm -hmm. Through a shamanic healing ceremony, I would assume you would use those types of things to to help with the cord stuff. But now I'm deathly curious to know what a soul retrieval is. Soul retrieval is uh, it's so um, how I do it. It's it's a shamanic term for like going into the. It's like you're in the spirit world. It's the journey that I take within my third eye. So. I, it, I work with my spirit animals um, and it's kind of like I go on this journey to kind of find um, fragments. So, for instance, someone who has suffered a lot of trauma in their life, maybe um, child abuse, um, perhaps maybe rape or things like that, or maybe a divorce. You know, when people are going through things like that, they check out in a way. They don't, it's, it's too much to handle. It's too much mm -hmm. pain. And so... They kind of go elsewhere. They take their awareness elsewhere subconsciously without even knowing you're doing it. And some, they're, sometimes they're like, I've never been the same after these situations. I feel like a part of me is missing. I'm depressed now. I'm this and that. And so those are, uh, fra those are fragments, like fra a fragmented soul. And it's not that it's missing. It's just it's been displayed. And so how do we go about bringing the pieces of the puzzle of this person together to, so they can feel a bit more whole? And so that's where I come in um, and I, I do this virtually. So they relax and they're listening to a shamanic drumming. I listen to my own shamanic drumming to get me into that mood of going in for this journey. And I seek fragments. And so let's say in my mind, I, I am traveling in a forest and I see something shining like a diamond. I go to that because that's where my awareness is. And then I see them at, as a child. Right. And so that, that fragment kind of turns me to the child. And so I see the state of the child. Are they upset? Are they crying? Do they feel scared? Are they upset? Are they mad? And so I, I say, you know, you're safe now. It's time to come back and to kind of get back to where you um, belong. And so I retrieve, sometimes I retrieve up to five different fragments. And, and then I, I bring that back into the heart space and I blow it. I, I, I blow it back into their heart space. I feel it. And then I would go over with them what I saw on the journey. And so a lot of times they're like, oh, you know, like, wow, like, I remember that happening to me or that. Yeah, you're, you know, so it's very deep. It's uh, also people would kind of consider this shadow work. Mm -hmm. as well. I know that your heritage, where your family comes from is South America. And there's a difference between South American shamanic rituals or traditions and native North American shamanic rituals. The thought of a spiritual retrieval immediately, the way you explained it is, is perfect. It makes perfect sense. Is it true that you are following more of a South American shamanic tradition or is there even that much of a difference between the two? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, um, I, 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 I was taught this, um, by, uh, Muriel Gray. She, she's a great shaman and, and I, I took some courses with her and, and, um, and she taught me this and then I just kind of took it on and like, just 
it became, I started to tap into something that was already in me. And I don't know where it comes from. It just comes from a place of knowing. Um, it's a lot of symbolism. It, it, it's uh, perhaps maybe I just had this. Perhaps maybe I've, I've been in, you know, I've had a life as a, as a Native American. Maybe I've also had a life. Well, I've had lives as a shaman as well. Like perhaps maybe in South America. So it's kind of like all these things are kind of like in me. And I'm just tapping in. And sometimes I don't know what side of me I'm tapping in on, but it's there, you know, it's not, it's interesting. Um, I, fe- I feel like I, perhaps I respect both. I re- even respect like in the African cultures and, and how they do their healing. Like it's just fascinating. So you're in Virginia beach currently. So if someone wants to reach out to you to get a healing or a reading or anything like that, obviously you mentioned that you prefer in person, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're not in Virginia Beach and you want to reach out to Maria, we'll lay down all of the links in our show notes to her social media platforms. And you can go to her website. Your company really is called Flower Magic. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Magic spelled with a CK. Right. So like the real magic, not like a yeah. stage magician magic. Right? Okay. Magic. Magic. <laughs> you gotta say that. Yeah. Right. So, so we'll add all those links to our show notes in case you want to reach out to her. But we would be remiss if we didn't ask you. We have a psychic medium in our midst. Is there, are you getting any kinds of messages or anything that we should be aware of? Maybe that we, that you've been struggling, holding yourself back from telling us, now's the time, Maria. <laughs> what message do you have for us? The first thing that came to mind was something big in November. Um, I'm not sure if some, if this past November, like something shifts, but I do feel like there's, Something going to be shifting as far as how you're going to be doing your work in November is what I'm seeing. It's almost like I see this like bowling ball, like just like um, kind of making way for something new, like a new wave or something. So just keep in mind. You feel it was, you feel it was last November or this coming November? Sometimes when months come to me, I just want to make sure, I feel like it's more future. But I just want to make sure that there wasn't some major shift that just happened in November. But November just really highlighted for me. And it just highlighted for me a, a huge transformation, almost kind of like a do-over of something. Hmm. Oh, wow. So it's because I see like a bowling ball and it's like like moving something out the way. I get a lot of visual. Like I see <laughs> yeah, it's cool. like a movie in my head. So keep in mind um, something about November, perhaps a name, like something with a name or just something, um, perhaps, um, someone big that you're going to be interviewing, but it's, uh, it's almost like a needed change or perhaps something that you've been thinking about a lot. I feel like it's going to really be, come from a deep part space for you as well. So perhaps something that you've been working on or cause I even see like you writing it, something down about it. So I hope that resonates. If not, just it. <laughs> well, yeah, all right. Well, the first thing that comes to mind, Karen, and I'm not sure what the timing was, but this new project that we're talking about working on. I was on, thinking about that. I think, didn't it start in November? I don't know. I don't remember what now. I think it was after that. Well, I don't know, maybe because we were talking about it in Florida and we were in Florida in December. So it might have started. We'll have to check, we'll have to check our emails. Yeah, we'll have to check our dates. But... <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, Maria, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us and our audience. I'm Definitely yeah. going to reach out to you because I think I've got a hundred thousand cords <laughs> that I'm going to need some help with because I'm tired all the time. And I know exactly what you meant when you said spiritually tired. I am spiritually exhausted and blocked. So I think uh, you might you might be able to do me some some serious good. So okay. I'm going to reach out to you for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you for having me. Are you kidding? Thank you for coming on. It was such a pleasure <laughs> to meet. Absolutely. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Before we close out the show, I wanted to share, Karen, another review that came in. A good one? A good one. Woo-hoo. Yes, another good one. I'm not sure if I would read a bad one. Well, I mean, I think in transparency, well, maybe I would, you should. No, well, see, the, the, the idea is to keep the bad ones to ourselves and, and make ourselves better so we turn them around and then they do a good one. But it could be like the mean tweets. Oh, I like that idea. That'd be kind of fun. I hadn't thought of that. But but don't leave us bad reviews, please, people. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a bad email. Don't leave us a bad review because <laughs> reviews that you can't take down. So. Uh, well, this review comes from the U- United States. So we're back in the States and it's, um, hmm, I'm not sure who the, this person is. It's K-K-E-P-M-I. How would you say that? K-K-E-P-M-I. K-K-E-P-M-I. 
I don't know. We, we, we butcher these names so badly. So please, please forgive us. Anyway, this person actually gave us a five-star review. Yeah. Very short, which is perfect. And that this person says, so cool. I love this podcast, an enlightening journey into the spiritual realm most are not familiar with. Nice. Short, sweet, to the point, and gets the exact message out. So, c- c- kept me. thank you so <laughs> much for leaving us a review. We really appreciate it. And we would love to hear from you. Yes, you, the person listening to this show right now. We really want to hear from you. Please visit us at skepticmetaphysician.com where you can leave us a voicemail or an email or a review directly on the site. You may just hear your voice or your words on the show, and we're always looking for ways to improve it. So if you have some feedback and you'd like to provide good or bad, just let us know you'd like to keep this off the air, and we're happy to just take the criticism to ourselves, despite what Karen says. (laughs) Of course, reviews and readings are a great way to evolve and grow the show, so we'd love it if you would take a minute and leave one of those for us as well. Well, as always, I want to thank you for coming along on this journey of discovery with us. Don't forget, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram under Skeptic Metaphysicians. As always, if you know someone that would benefit from hearing the messages we shared on this show or any of our others, I hope you'll consider sharing us with that person. It'll help grow the show and may just help someone else come to terms with the fact that we're so much more than just this three-dimensional body that we inhabit. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as we have. That is all we have for now, but we'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Until then... Take care.